to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. How has the conference been? Amen. It's a very good question because there are people who don't benefit from conferences, not because God did not come, but they didn't learn to connect. Jacob said, surely the Lord was in this place. He says, and I knew not. In the name of Jesus, let the impact of the conference speak in your life. Yeah. Hallelujah. Let's lift our hands to heaven. And ask the Lord to visit us yet again. Ask the Lord to visit us yet again. The Lord appeared. Unto Samuel in Shiloh. Even by his word. Go ahead and ask him to appear unto you by his word. Shalando sabrati ke palakoria takarabos. Elando sate palakosha prande ke parato sabrasis. Visit me by your word. Speak to me. Bring a word of restoration over my life and over my destiny. In the name of Jesus. Now, let me request before we sit, let's just take a minute or two. I'd like you to mention strategic areas in your life where you are contending for restoration. Don't be vague. The Bible says, give us this day, not give us any day. Then it says our daily bread. Mention the area. Is it your finances? Is it your health? I'd like you to decree and declare in the name of Jesus that this and that area specifics this is the area I release my faith for restoration. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. Crying from the depth of your heart. Determined to receive restoration. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. By your spirit I will rise. The resurrected King is resurrecting me. In your name I come alive to declare your victory. The resurrected King is resurrected. One more time. By your spirit I will rise from the ashes of defeat. In your name I come alive To declare your victory The resurrected King Is resurrecting me Hallelujah I like to start my session As a prayer meeting So we're going to do a lot of praying Within the time that we have And I trust that God will speak to our hearts In Jesus name I'll be taking a teaching This morning Commanding restoration commanding restoration i want to show you certain mysteries by the spirit that can help an individual to command restoration but if you can hold the hands of someone by your left and right and let's pray in the spirit for a few minutes i'd like you to do it with determination do it with understanding go ahead and pray that includes those who are following by way of the internet we are praying 
commanding restoration shalada balaka paragata branda gebeleke parados go ahead and pray every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome every high every high thing must come down Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Go ahead, pray the spirit. Shabala bagata branda gata belage pa. Kera salana ke parado sabra gata belage parudu. Ebrada bada bala da bata sabra gata belage pa. Hey, Parato Shalaga Parada Balada 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 Ke pre ke palato shalega paranda parato sabres ke peda kata shaida balada balaka ta branda ke pere ke parato skaprinda ke pele ke pa krata kata leke perenda ke shalaka paras raka ta bela da baka ta pras kana malanda ka pras ke bele ke parata kata shalama raka ta panda braga te bele ke pa raka te sada shalanda ka pras ka parata baka ta brada ka ta bele ke ta. And the rest kodola kapara kata branda kebere kete parada bagata shana na bagata branda kebara kete branda kebere kata dus shete bela kebara kata branda kete bela kata raku sabras kebere kete parandos kodoba kata branda kete ebren salamana kata praka kete bela kebara kata praka kete bela kata go ahead and pray. Krateka de Belenga Prakata Preske Parakata Prakete Palandos Kotia Shadena Caparandos Kopari Capariatas Krena Palanda Greke Perega de Belega Parata Cata Fratega Palada Gata In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, the Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have in Him. That when we ask anything in accordance to his will we know that he hears us and then the bible says we do not know what to pray for as we ought to it says but the spirit of god helpeth our infirmity our limitations there are things we need to receive but because we are frail we do not understand the whole dynamics of making it happen but that we have an advantage we can allow the holy spirit pray through us and our confidence is that whilst we pray in the spirit we are praying in accordance with the will of the father can you take a few minutes to still pray in the spirit that you are establishing realities over your life and over your destiny He pala shalaka papara kata baranda kata frege de bas krate kapalanta salaka tapras kapalaka bas pray with dedicated focus pray believing that the Holy Spirit is praying the will of God through you the will of God that brings restoration the will of God that brings advancement. Alanta kaparata kaparada balaka paros shana balaka da pragada balaka parata kata prenda kaparatas kela shafras kaparenta kapara kaparata kaparados Ah, 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 ah,
Two more minutes, you are praying. Ima shalanda brakate balake paradus. Rada la kabarando sobre salada balada da da bakata. Shala sali kaparatos kabrenda kaparatos. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will find unrestrained access to our minds, unrestrained access to our destinies. Build someone, restore someone, heal someone, deliver someone transform someone and to jesus be all the glory amen and amen please be seated without distraction be seated without distraction we are still praying it's a prayer meeting amos chapter 9 commanding restoration amos chapter 9 we'll read from verse 13 to 15 let's start from there for this session Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper, and the treader of grapes him that soweth seed, and the mountains shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. Reading to 15. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities, and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof and shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them final verse and i will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled out of their land which i have given them thus saith the lord thy god so we have a promise of restoration here as revealed in amos chapter 9 alongside several other scriptures the bible says in psalm 103 when you begin to read from verse 1 down to 4 it says bless the lord please look up oh my soul and it says all that is within me bless his holy name verse 2 now says bless the lord oh my soul then it now introduces an information that is important for the excelling of the believer it says forget not all not all his benefits immediately the bible teaches us from this scripture that in addition to loving jesus in addition to serving jesus that when we come into this kingdom experience there are benefits someone say benefits that there are benefits and it now begins to list a number of these benefits five of them as captured from this scripture number one he says who forgiveth all thine iniquities number two who healeth all thy diseases number three verse four who redeemeth thy life right there is deliverance and restoration the word redeem means to buy back by paying a price and then honor who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies verse 5 says who satisfied thy mouth with good things so that thy youth is renewed like the eagle say amen. amen so the bible tells us that in as much as we do not serve god and seek god for things we seek him because we love him we seek him because of who he is but that in the kingdom there are benefits and one of the many benefits that is a provision for the saints to enjoy is restoration are we together now restoration forget not his benefits restoration there are many principles that control results in the kingdom 
and the starting point of every believer's success is to be aware that those possibilities exist please follow carefully it's a prayer meeting you cannot place a demand over a promise you are not even aware exists are we together so the foundation for your victory as a believer is knowledge not knowledge on how to make it yours knowledge of the existence if i'm thirsty for instance and i do not know or i cannot see that there is a bottle or a cup of water it becomes madness for me to be placing a demand over nothing as far as i can see on this table right now there's no cup or bottle of water or any other thing i cannot reach and try to get something because there's nothing there are we together most believers cannot place a demand because they are not even aware that there are benefits and they are not even aware of what those benefits are and i'm showing you in this prayer session that one of the benefits that the saints stand to enjoy in christ is the privilege to experience restoration and that there is a promise that guarantees that any believer in christ can experience restoration are we together restoration to bring things back to their original state to bring things back to their intended state regardless what happened before that time that it is within the power of god to cause men to experience restoration but i want to show you one key and that key is the force of strategic prayer i want to show you from scripture how restoration happens we'll be considering that throughout my session what i'm taking for a study philippians chapter 1 and verse 19 i'd like us to read it together when we get to see philippians 1 and verse 19 i like the first three words he said for i know i know there are not many times paul will make such statements one of them is i know we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the lord and to them who are the called according to his purposes and here we see in philippians chapter 1 and verse 9 if you're ready please let's read together one to go for i know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of christ jesus one more time uh-huh very profound audacious scripture it says for i know i know now when you read in context you would have to start from verse 12 and paul was talking about the preaching of the gospel he was talking about those who were preaching it maliciously he says in verse 12 that the things which happened unto me, the betrayal, the imprisonment, all that I went through, he said that they have fallen out rather to the furtherance of the gospel. Are we together? Then he begins to tell us that some people preach out of envy, hoping to add to his bonds and to his affliction. And others preach out of sincerity. But then he says, regardless what the situation is, by the time we get to verse 19, he says, for I know i know that this shall turn to my salvation this tragic situation this disheartening situation this disappointing situation this embarrassing situation are we together whether it is delay whether it is sickness whatever it is that there is a provision in the dealings of god with men where all things regardless what they are can turn for the salvation of the saints no wonder the bible says um how does he put it now he says all things work together all things not all good things all things regardless what it is all things can work together for the good of them that love the lord and to them who are the called according to his purposes are we learning now so he says for i know that this shall turn to my salvation and then he reveals a strategy he says through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ this is what i want us to consider as we pray this morning so paul here reveals prayer as one of the secrets and one of the mysteries in the spirit that is able to turn a man's situation and provide profit and provide glory out of it 
the bible tells us already that god is able to command light not into darkness light out of darkness that means in every situation no matter how dark that situation is light can be brought from it in the name of jesus christ and that is what god is doing over someone's life that all you can see around your life is darkness but that my god is able to call light call light out of darkness god who had commanded light to come out of darkness hallelujah i know that this shall turn to my salvation this joblessness i lost my job i i lost whatever it is this church right now is a testament of this scripture that in spite of how the year started by september you are already standing in glory as god told you by january 1st that in spite of what happened you have been able to route a strategy in the spirit to overcome that which would have defeated you and made it look like god's word were a lie i know this is a word for someone i know i know regardless what it, the problem is i know that this i know my god that this shall turn to my salvation and that that happens through prayer and the supply of the spirit in christ jesus now let me tell you this many believers pray but very few people pray strategically many believers pray like many believers farm like many people farm there's what we call amateur local subsistent farming am i right you are still engaging the soil but your yield sometimes can be terrible and disappointing but there is what we call mechanized farming you are still engaging the ground but that you have studied the factors that make the crops to produce and under mechanized farming you literally can predict with the precision of a prophet that this acre of land will deliver this amount of rice and you will get it with digital precision the rice is not there are we together now but that you are able to predict do you know how you got to that point by examining all the factors not every factor is necessary to be learned but there are a few factors when you study genetics and all kinds of advancement even in agriculture they study the unique components that are responsible for various features that you see in crops this is how prayer is most people pray and just because you are saying something does not mean you are praying effectively i want to teach you something very powerful so you find out that there is a dissipation of energy towards situations but they do not change and the believers leave disappointed because they keep wondering why is it that i'm investing time praying they say sincerely so i have seen vehicles on the road and and, and i don't mean to paint uh, their nation bad but i've seen vehicles on the road when you hear the sound you would think it's a truck but when it passes you see that it's one little car that is struggling you've seen cars like that something is wrong with the mechanics of that car a very loud noise but then there's very little motion and there are cars that the only thing you hear is just the wind and it's gone the difference is the mechanics what i want to show you today in the name of jesus will help you to be able to engage prayer in a way that produces power in a way that produces restoration you believe that shout amen. amen i know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit in christ jesus there are four ways that prayer can help a believer access restoration there are four ways according to scripture prayer is vast in its operation but we are considering the force of prayer with respect to commanding restoration and that there are four ways that prayer as a spiritual strategy is able to help the believer to obtain to enforce restoration number one are you ready now prayer activates the ministry of angels prayer activates the ministry of angels Acts chapter 12 please be patient as i read prayer activates the ministry of angels now about that time 
Herod the king stretched forth his hand to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Verse 3. The Bible says, and because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further. I, had, I think I've taught it in this church that every time the devil strikes and you are silent and you take it casual, he proceeds further. He killed James and everybody kept quiet and the Bible says he proceeded further. To take Peter also. These were the days of unleavened bread. Uh-huh. Verse 4, it says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him, you know, and there were soldiers guarding him and so on and so forth. Verse 5, it says, Peter was therefore kept in prison. Now the game begins to change. But prayer, someone say, but prayer. One more time, say, but prayer. But prayer was made without season of the church unto God for him. Verse 6, the Bible says, when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. Look at the response to prayer now. And the keepers before the door who kept the prison. Verse 7. It says, behold, in response to prayer, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying, arise up quickly. And the chains fell from his hand. Verse 8. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself and bind up thy sandals. So he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. Next verse. He went out and followed him and wished not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but he thought he was in a vision. Verse 10. The Bible says, When they had come through the first gate and the second gate that opened on his own accord, they came to the iron gate that leads to the city, and when the angel brought him to the city, the angel departed from him. We're still reading verse 11 now. He says, when Peter was come to himself, listen, he said, now I know of a surety that the Lord had sent his angel on account of the prayer of the saints and had delivered me out of the hand of Herod and delivered me from the expectation of the people. Pause here for a minute. Can you see that he was delivered from the hand of of Herod but he was also delivered from expectations in the place of prayer you can be delivered from expectations ill wishes that have not yet manifested you can abort it in the spirit before it arrives delivered me from the hand of Herod I'm already in the situation but that prayer can go ahead and stop things that were programmed already to happen Dangerous things programmed into your September, your October, your November, your December, your next year, your 10 years. But that in the place of prayer, you can engage in such a way that no matter what you see in the spirit, it never finds manifestation. It is stopped even before the arrival. So prayer is both preventive and curative. That when you find yourself in that situation, prayer can still do something about that situation. But that even when it is still being formed in the womb of the spirit, you can kill that thing before it manifests. Hallelujah. Delivered me from all the expectations of the people. Verse 12. And when he considered the thing, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of John, whose son name was Mark, where there were people together praying. Can you see that even until the deliverance was over, prayer was still ongoing? And Peter knocked at the door of the gate, and a damsel to hearken named Rhoda, verse 14. And when she knew that it was Peter's voice, she opened not the gate for gladness, but ran in and told how that Peter stood before the gate, verse 15. The Bible says, and they said unto her, thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. And they said, it is his angel. That means the disciples, now apostles, were not at a loss as to the fact that they expected angels to move on, on, on account of their prayer. To the point that they had a knock at the door. And when the damsel went there, they said, no, it's the angels. They are on assignment. Let's keep praying. They didn't know the angels had finished the job. They said it's not unusual for the angels to knock 
they are walking is it means to us the angels just came as a witness that our prayer is producing effect if you were praying and an angel knocked the door wouldn't you open the door and even stop praying and greet the angel and say you are welcome you are you are an encouragement to me but they say no don't be distracted they are walking it is because we are praying that they are walking if we stop praying and go to attend to them then we will abort what they came to do but they did not know that the angel was done with the walk and this was peter it is his angel verse 16 we're stopping at 17 but peter continued knocking and when they had opened the door and saw him they were astonished verse 17 but he beckoning on them with the hand to hold their peace declared unto them how that the lord had brought him out of prison and he said go and show these things to james and to the brethren and he departed and went to another place you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good hebrews chapter 1 from verse 14 speaking about angels paul had this to say are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation do you know please look at me most believers are ignorant as to the ministry of angels now we all know that there is such a phenomenon as angels and we all know that it's true that they walk but i can tell you most believers do not even believe in the ministry of angels and that includes preachers if an angel were to knock your door now you'll be surprised that you will cast that angel by the blood of jesus because you had no he's not a visitor whose whose ministry is welcomed in your life and most believers have been at a point of disadvantage because we have not learned how to engage the ministry of angels that the first way prayer works for restoration is to activate in your life the ministry of angels the ministry of angels all through scripture you will see that in the place of prayer there was encounter with angels remember the temptation of jesus when you read matthew's account mark's account luke's account the bible tells us that after jesus prayed was tempted of the devil when he overcame satan the bible says the angels came and ministered to him or strengthened him or strengthened him angelic ministry is real let me speak to someone here angels are still on assignment angels are still in lagos angels jacob went to bed in genesis chapter 28 and jacob himself said that he had a dream and he saw a ladder that connected the earth to the heavens and he saw angelic activities angelic activities every time men are open to the realm of the spirit you see angelic activities the bible says they excel in strength but that their activities are governed by the prayers of the saints are we together now that they 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 are sent to minister to minister let me tell you the truth there are many things that happen physically you may not know who is doing that but they are angels who are doing this when you read about jesus teaching about the harvest and the great commission you will see that angels have a role to play no church just grows because of a poster or a billboard there are angels that are assigned revelations 1 verse 1 let me show you something we're discussing the ministry of angels who is learning the revelation of jesus christ which god gave unto him to show unto his servants the things that must surely come to pass. Read the remaining line with me. And he sent it and signified it by his... There are angels that are sent to protect the revelation God gives a man. That every time you are teaching as touching your office, there are angels that move to defend that grace that was to you so if it's a healing ministry the moment you begin to speak if it is god that has anointed you there are healing angels that begin to move to bring confirmation are we together i remember william branham 
those days, he would stand on stage with thousands of people and he would not move. He would say he was waiting for his angel. And all of a sudden, he would smile and say he's here. And with precision, he would begin to call people and minister to them. Now, we are not commanded to idolize angels. We are not commanded to worship angels. But the Bible tells us that they walk in partnership with the will of God. The ministry of angels. Restoration. So someone can be crying, Lord, I lost a job. I lost my job and I know that you are able to restore. And while that is happening, angels can be walking upon the heart of your destiny helper and cause you to collide. Now, I'll tell you a few stories. I hope you have the faith to believe. Many years ago, many, quite many years ago, then back in Zaria, we're preparing for a crusade. This is a true story. I stand before the Lord and I lie not. I was in a bus with a friend we were going to already visiting the pfn people just trying to arrange for the crusade and within that that bus my phone fell i don't know where it went to as soon as we came down those of you who know abuja they call the place mararaba that area the bus dropped us there and then we came down and it was gone i could not find my phone I knew that it, it was not stolen. I couldn't find my phone. I spoke to my friend then and I said, look, my phone is missing. And he was trying to trace the bus. Now, you know, you, you didn't look at the color or the plate number and he was running back to go and check it. God is my witness. I'm standing and I'm praying in the spirit and someone walks up to me limping and gives me my phone. I held my phone and I told him, thank you. I was trying to call my friend and I turned back and I couldn't see him again. Are they not sent to minister to they that be heirs of salvation? Another story, still many years ago, I will never forget an experience that challenged my Christian life. It shocked me. I feared God in a new way. So someone calls me and I pick up the call and the woman begins to converse with me as if we have spoken before you can imagine calling someone and you are continuing a conversation i had never spoken to such a woman as such as as much as i recall but the conversation continued and you know it's like okay just like we're discussing sorry for the delay but somehow i felt in my heart not to say who are you who is this i kept quiet and i continued the conversation and the woman kept talking as if there had been a prior discussion it was to meet her and pray with her that time and i think it was a seed she wanted to sow and then a few things then at the aviation college in zaria so i was waiting for the day we will meet with the woman so that she will be surprised and say sorry i think i've been talking with the wrong person the day i met with the woman she so rejoiced and started telling me discussions we had that i cannot remember it was an activity with angels i just continued from where they stopped I can tell you firsthand most people are not spiritual enough i'm sorry not to insult you but we live in such a carnal generation we do not even believe that these things exist again hmm. the ministry of angels it is true god can send angels to protect how was daniel preserved an angel lions would have torn him into pieces but angels came and stood there and the lions were hungry, but they stood helpless. I'm praying for someone here in the name of Jesus that as you engage in prayer with understanding, you will begin to see marvelous activities of angels. Marvelous activities of angels. That you will start seeing people come to church on Sunday and then they will tell you, someone told me, come to this church. Who is that someone? No name. The ministry of angels. The ministry of angels i can tell you stories with angelic encounters our first crusade the very first crusade that we had we got there and we really were at a loss as to what to do or was it the second i think it was the second crusade someone just walked up to me it was a village and um he walked up to me and this is what he told me he said get a bus and get a megaphone he said go around the city and publicity and that was it i never saw the man again never saw the man again 
mysterious occurrences i have seen people healed in the hospital true story that whilst the doctors are treating them it is clear that this situation is disheartening and when the doctors leave they will tell you a stranger came in they thought it was another doctor wearing a lab coat wearing whatever and they just know that they were seeing the person and he did something to them that nobody saw only the person and they return back and the vitals begin to speak until the people recover the ministry of angels do you believe this and i know that this shall turn to my salvation because there are still angels on assignment still angels on assignment sent to my destiny sent to your ministry sent to protect and defend god's name upon your life hallelujah i can tell you several stories i know a man it's a story i heard so it's not something i've verified but i believe it's true that some people were plotting to kill him or so and a police officer was sitting in his house and all of a sudden a phone rang true story he said the phone rang and someone called him and said go to xyz street in this house number there are armed robbers there and he called the phone called back and the number was not going so he thought he was just these guys trying to mobilize intelligence and truly when they went to that place they found these guys who were almost drunk they were planning to go out in the night and to kill that man now when they you know they now probe them and ask them what were you people planning to do they said we're planning to kill this person we got intel that some money you know was released to him and we're going to kill him and um they now ask the policeman who told you he said it was a call they tried that number till forever he could not go who was the person so that the man who was delivered could say thank you he never saw him i'm praying for you supernatural surprises from today supernatural surprises from today hallelujah supernatural experiences experiences of the spirit I can tell you stories about people whose cars were moving well and at some point the car just died. They kicked the car and kicked the car and kicked the car and it refused to go up. And they felt what was the problem now again? This restraint and a few minutes they just said they were armed robbers robbing somewhere. As soon as the police came they kicked the car it started well again. Do you know that it was an angel that stopped the donkey from going? Now, until God opened, there are some restrictions that are not demonic. It is the angelic trying to say there is trouble. There is trouble. There is trouble. You have been trying to arrange the meeting. It's not working. God is saying there might be something there that will become a disaster. It's just that most believers lack discernment and they've not been trained to work with angels. To work with angels. To walk with angels the ministry of angels who is learning and i know that this shall turn my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of christ jesus so angels are ministering spirits they minister can i be honest with you there are more angels in this place right now and you believe me on that right now than the people who are here gathered what do you think they are here to do to answer a register to hear a sermon no. why do you think you come to church and the sick is still sick the oppressed is still oppressed but the moment the word of god comes mighty things start happening it's not that's not the time the anointing came it's always there but there are rules of engagement. The angels don't just arrive and start solving problems. There is an order to their operation. And one of the triggers is the prayers of the saints. When the saints do not pray, even though James is an apostle, he can go like that. And they said, we will not let this happen again. When they called Peter, the Bible says they began to pray. And the angel said, now we can move. Hallelujah. The Bible says you are come to Mount Zion. Bible students, let's go back to the word. Among the many things that happen in Mount Zion is an innumerable company of angels. In spite of the fact that there are witnesses, 
the spirits of just men made perfect are we together now that means there are times we'll be holding conferences like this and men like paul abraham reinhard bonke god is able to grant them access to see and watch the fruits of their labor in the spirit i can imagine how many times paul as an apostle has watched services happen like this and they read of his epistles the ministry of angels when i prepare for meetings i don't just ask god to go before me alone i pray that the fullness of the graces and the forces that should back the delivery of that word that they are even positioned before my arrival this is how it happens and that's the reason why you find out that sometimes things just begin to happen supernaturally and mysteriously i'm educating you this morning to know that angels are still on assignment who is learning angels are still on assignment angels are still on assignment number two how does prayer help to enforce restoration number two prayer allows you to exercise your will your power to make choices prayer allows you to exercise your will your power to make choices this is very powerful in deuteronomy chapter 30 19 and 20 popular scriptures deuteronomy 30 19 and 20 the bible says i call heaven and earth to record this day against you that i have set before you life and death i have set before you blessing and cursing therefore choose life someone say choose life in fact say it well say i choose life prophesy say i choose life it says that both you and your seed may live verse 20 it says that thou mayest love the lord and thou mayest obey his voice so that you will enjoy length of days and you will dwell in the land that he swore to your father so i call on heaven to record this day that you choose life hallelujah job chapter 22 and verse 28 it says declare ye that thou mightest be justified hallelujah job 22 and verse 38 verse 28 job 22 28 thou shall also decree a thing and it shall be established unto you isaiah chapter 43 and verse 26 it says declare ye that thou mightest be justified isaiah 43 26 declare ye that thou mightest be justified so when you engage in prayer isaiah 43 26 43 and 26 every time you engage in prayer it gives you an opportunity to exercise your will to exercise your will i hope you know that god made man a free moral agent do you know what that means from the time god gave you a will it becomes scripturally incorrect for god to force anything on your life not even salvation at the expense of your eternal destiny he allows you to choose i would say it humorously that if i suffer and die for you on the cross you must choose me you must choose me i, I can't die like that for nothing are we together once you are alive no you have to reward that sacrifice and yet god is able to say that even though salvation is yours you can choose as an act of your will to say i see what you have done on the cross but i choose death and he will honor it he said behold i stand at the door of your heart and knock the very owner the very creator and knock when you pray you exercise your will in the name of jesus christ i declare restoration that my september my october my november this is you exercising your will i decree and declare the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall i be afraid of i declare that no evil shall come near my dwelling are we together i enjoy length of days i enjoy peace you are a man of god you are speaking over your walk it is from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ the lord is adding daily to me and to the congregation as many who should be saved they are transformed as you speak you see you are authorizing heaven and the realm of the spirit to move in keeping with that which you are saying keeping quiet is the same thing as speaking negatively keeping quiet is the same thing as a negative confession let the redeemed of the Lord help me household of David let the redeemed of the Lord 
let the anointed of the Lord let the healed of the Lord let the lifted of the Lord let the restored of the Lord say so say so make declaration say so you get up in the morning and speak to your day in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that the hand of God is upon my life I enjoy favor favor in my place of work favor in ministry I collide with destiny helpers strategically arranged by the wisdom of God I deal wisely with them for my profiting hallelujah there's some board meeting that is clearly to antagonize you you don't sit down and start making blind calls in the flesh no you start by making declarations first in the name of Jesus I decree and declare the angel of the Lord goes before me there's confusion in the camp of the enemy the Bible says the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest he dips his hand in iniquity I decree and declare I'm escaped from the plan of the wicked like the bird before the snare of the fowler you believe what you are hearing this is how we reign in this kingdom you ignore this you will pay the price with your life there are people who send words like ushers to receive them into a glorious day a glorious destiny while others happen and they just step into a day that is filled with arrows that fly by day those arrows are words they are not metals the arrows that fly by day they are words Oh, let someone be disappointed today. So says an enchantment somewhere. And before it arrives, there is a wall that builds a garrison. You walk protected by words, protected by mysteries. Surely they shall gather. But because their gathering is not of the Lord, they will scatter. They will come in one way and scatter in seven ways. Hallelujah. There's a difficult situation before you. You don't sit down and start lamenting like an unbeliever. Hey, yeah, so this is how my life will be. No. Daniel chapter 2. Then the secret was revealed unto Daniel. In the place of prayer, there is a spirit in man. The inspiration of the Almighty can make men, ordinary men, even unlearned men of understanding. I have understanding, superior knowledge. How does prayer activate transformation? Because in the place of prayer, you have an opportunity to partner with the spirit of grace. You activate your power to choose. Your power to choose. If you keep quiet, life will make its choice for you. And oh dear, you do not want to see the variety of trouble that life can arrange for you if you don't make your choices by yourself. I refuse to step into a destiny that I did not contribute to its making with my words. No. No. We learned that from Job. Arrangements were made over the catastrophe of Job and he did not participate in that process. Not me. If it has to do with my destiny, I must be part of the decision-making process. So what are you scheduling for my October, November, December? Oh, the devil is scheduling an accident. The devil is scheduling trouble there. Unfortunately, I do not approve of that template. God gave me a will. And even God has chosen to honor my will. So no devil will veto my will. And just allow outcomes happen like that. And I decree and declare, I overturn accidents. I overturn trouble. Are we together now? This is how believers live. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so say so say so number three how does prayer lead to transformation and lead to restoration prayer allows you to receive counsel and direction from the holy spirit this is powerful prayer gives you an opportunity to receive direction and to receive counsel from the holy spirit acts chapter 9 from verse 6 this is a very profound scripture Acts chapter 9 from verse 6 let's hurry up is God speaking to someone already in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ for someone the Lord is asking me to emphasize this second point you have allowed life and 
demonic orchestrations to be programmed in your life without contributing with your words it must change you keep silent only to open your mouth and complain you must learn how to be a participant in the making of your destiny a participant in the making of your destiny when you go to a restaurant because you did not contribute in making the meal you cannot complain whatever is served before you you eat it quietly or you walk out of that place but when you want to cook the kind of meal you want what do you do you buy the ingredients and go home and now prepare it to your taste anything you did not participate in is making you cannot complain over it holy holy blessed is he who comes in the name of our God let's read this scripture Paul now as Saul and he trembling and astonished said Lord what will you have me do watch this Jesus is speaking to him now and the Lord said unto him arise and go into the city and it shall be told thee you are going to be directed what you must do verse 7 let's hurry and the man which journeyed with him stood speechless hearing a voice but seeing no man eight and Saul arose from the earth and when his eyes were open he saw no man but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus uh-huh and he was there three days without sight neither did he eat or drink please follow carefully and there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias watch this and to him said the Lord in a vision Ananias and he said behold I am here Lord and the Lord said unto him arise go into the street which is called straight and inquire of the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus please read the last sentence you see there the last line for behold he prayer this is what he was doing you already said someone is bringing me direction now I am blind I am incapacitated I can't even identify the person but one thing I can do is I can pray I, I may not be able to eat I may not be able to walk anywhere but the Bible says he prayed and God took notice of the fact that even though the man was incapacitated that means whatever fails in your life still pray if you cannot get a job at least pray if you cannot call a destiny helper at least pray Paul was blind Paul was weak Paul was hungry Paul was incapacitated but the one thing he said I will not stop doing is I will not stop praying and the Bible says even God took notice as he was telling Ananias he said behold he prayeth verse 12 and he had seen in a vision a man named Ananias watch direction you see that your physical eyes does not have to be open to see this guy was blind but he was still seeing visions and putting his hand upon him that he might receive his sight 14 and Ananias said Lord I have heard of this man how much evil he had done to thy saints at Jerusalem we're reading to 17 and he had received authority from the chief priest to bind all that call upon your name 15 ah I'm already inspired look at how men talked with God this guy was not a prophet but look at how ordinary believers this is the model that men talked with God they didn't cry and say are you a demon spirit no they talked with God not Old Testament the Lord said unto him go thy way for he is a chosen vessel you see that most of the confusion we experience is because we don't hear God that's why there's a lot of conflict God told Ananias go and meet the man Paul Ananias was angry he didn't ask Paul to explain himself he asked God it was God that was explaining the true state of Paul to Ananias that don't don't worry this man he has changed now he's a vessel I will use so he did not come to Paul to say you Paul I've heard about you no God has already given me an information about your destiny is someone learning to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel uh-huh 
16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Verse 17. And Ananias went his way. I like this. He entered into the house and putting his hand on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared to you. Look at the kind of confidence. How do you come to a man you have never met and said, I, the Jesus you saw also appeared to me. And he told me to continue from where he stopped with you. That I will lay my hands upon you. That your eyes will be opened and you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. Such accuracy. May God restore this dimension to the body of Christ. That an employee potentially can be in the room in the place of prayer. And God will tell him, go to this street, turn left. When you turn left, carry your CV along. There is a man I have already told you are coming. Are we together now? And while the boss is there, God tells him there is a young man coming. That young man is an orphan. Don't waste his time. As he arrives there, give him a job. And as soon as both of you meet, there is a knowing in the spirit. No confusion, no waste of time. Are you the gentleman that God sent? Yes, sir. Where, prove to me you are the one. This is the CV he said I will come with. Something happened a month ago, um, back, back at home. Uh, I was praying, preparing for service. And the Lord spoke to me, opened my eyes, and I saw two ladies, young ladies. And the Lord told me that I'm going to meet these ladies in church. And that when I meet these ladies, I should help them with their education. Or that both of them were orphans. And so I just wrote it down. I'd finished seeing people, and I was now seeing people on the queue and there came these two young ladies and i looked at them and i was smiling the power of direction smiling and then i just listened to them as though i didn't know what to do and they spoke to me one said she's an orphan the other one said she's an orphan immediately i called my people i said from now henceforth this what we'll do for these people this you you see how ease comes when you can hear god I think it's God's servant, Bishop Oedipo, who says that they were traveling around trying to look for land where Canaan land is now. And when they got to the place, the Holy Spirit told him, this is the place. Do you know how you got to this place? Household of David. I'm sure that your pastor has told you how he got to this place. It's a wonder. Looking at the hand of God, I can see that direction by the Spirit is powerful. Yes. I remember the first time, was it that I came here? This was even before all of this. Looking at that, but he could see something that only him could see. Like someone is in church now and God can be speaking to you. Your destiny helper just arrived Lagos. And I'm not talking of hearing nonsense. I'm talking of genuine hearing with proof. Okay? My destiny helper has come. Lord, what do I need to do? And the Lord says, begin to pray. And a call comes and they say, please, can you come and receive something? Just when you are coming to receive it, a man looks at you and says, do you have a job? Something in me says I should help you. It's not something. It's an intelligent orchestration in the spirit. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Acts chapter 13, 1 to 3. I'll give you one more and then we'll pray. Acts chapter 13, watch this. Now they were in the church that was in Antioch. Certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Nigger or, you know, and Lucius of Cyrene and all of those names which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. Verse 2. Watch this. The Bible says, As they ministered unto the Lord and fasted. You see that? Praying and fasting. The Holy Ghost said. The Holy Ghost said. Not to one person. He said separate all of them. They had it. Separate me, Barnabas and Saul. For the work whereunto I have called them. Verse 3, and when they were done fasting and had prayed, they laid their hands. No confusion. How many board meetings will have quick 
and peaceful resolutions if they hear God. There's no such thing as just voting five out of eight. That God spoke to them, separate me. God spoke to them, this is the next prayer leader. God spoke to them, as naive as this lady is, she's the next prophetic worshiper. Build her, invest in her. Do you know that you can waste money in business and throw money from pillar to post just using intelligence? But when you are guided by the Lord, you have laser precision even over your finances. And don't let naive, ignorant people make you feel that all this is church talk. Your reality is based on your conviction. If you don't believe God can guide you with that level of precision, then you will suffer for the rest of your life doing a lot of trial and error. Are we together? To receive counsel and direction from the Spirit. For some of you, it's in the place of prayer, you will ask the Lord, should I pursue? Should I overtake? You have given me three jobs. All of them look lucrative. But which one has a future? And which one is consistent? Do you know that sometimes when the devil wants to destroy you, he gives you something that is so attractive, it will look like a distraction to pray about it. Because you'll be like, no, it cannot be the devil giving me this good thing. And you follow that direction until your life is destroyed. I'm praying for someone here. As you engage in prayer, I cry unto the God of my covenant. You will hear God expressly loud and clear. You will hear God bringing direction to your life, direction over your business in the name of Jesus Christ. Number four. So how prayer transforms to restoration. One, it activates the ministry of angels. Number two, it gives you an opportunity to exercise your will, your power to choose. Number three, it allows you to receive counsel and direction from the Holy Spirit, bringing precision to your life. Number four, and we'll stop here. Prayer activates discernment, helping you to escape satanic traps and calamities listen to this one prayer activates discernment helping you to escape satanic traps and calamities matthew chapter 6 and verse 13 jesus was teaching how to pray and he said lead us not into temptation someone say amen to that prayer lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil do you know what temptation is something that connects to your desire but is intended to destroy you are we together now if you are looking for a job your temptation will come around your desire this is also how the spirit of seduction works seduction works by connecting itself to something you desire intrinsically if it is finances the devil can come through a suggestion and someone will tell you there is something you can go and wash your eyes somewhere or you can kill a human being and remove the organs unfortunately like we have it been practiced in certain places go and bow to an altar somewhere and boom you will have money now that temptation would not work if you have a certain level of wealth but because you are desperate and you are in need satan loves desperation because he fashions temptations out of your desperation are we together the wife of job was influenced by a spirit a demon spirit obviously to tempt her husband even though she was a good woman she said why hold on to your integrity curse god and die job would have said this is a good idea I mean, what am I living for? I've lost everything. Now I'm filled with all kinds of sores. And to curse God and die. But he said, no, why do you speak like one of these foolish women? And he began to speak. Though he slay me, yet will I tempt him. Will I, will I praise him? When Satan came to Jesus in the wilderness, you know what happened? Because Jesus was hungry, having fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. What was the nature of the temptation? Number one, turn this stone bread do something about your hunger 
you are too powerful to remain hungry. Not after your fasting is over. Do something about it. And you would have said, this is a great idea. It even occurred to me that I can turn stones to bread. I will not just turn stones to bread. I will turn stones to fish. Bread and fish. That's a, that's a healthy meal, eh? Some of you are already hungry. Bread and fish. That was a very serious meal those days. You had to be wealthy to have bread and fish. Yeah. Are we together? And Jesus rebuked Satan. He had the power to do it, but he rebuked it. Satan sometimes will come and tempt you along areas where you have the power to execute what he's saying. But that power of restraint, you see that now? Discernment is very powerful. You've heard me say this. There is a kiss that is a sign of love, but there is a kiss that is a signal to the enemy. This is the one to kill. So sometimes you bring your cheek to every mouth, believing that every kiss is a holy kiss. And for many, you have received the kiss of destruction, the kiss of death. You get what I'm saying now? Yes. Every handshake, every handshake, because the person carried a carriage of a friend. If you saw Satan in the flesh, you will want to be the friend of such a person. Very dexterous with a compelling persona, but he's still Lucifer. There are many, many people who will come in the appearance of light, but I tell you, there are devils within. You will need discernment. Are we together? Satan will not come with horns. He will not come wearing a black robe and red eyes. No, he will come looking like your destiny helper. He will even come prophesying to you, you need a job. And you are like, my God, he has come. but discernment let me give you a key every time your spirit restrains you no matter how correct it is stop stop at that point until prayer filters everything and explains to you why that feeling is there is someone learning now that there are times i'm not talking of fear that everything physically is correct and yet it can be an opportunity it can be an open door and now you're wondering how how do i i mean this good things happening but once your heart begins to disturb you even if it's in a meeting as much as you can request for time and go back to god what is the meaning of this restraint in my spirit what is the meaning of this restraint i've told you my story how i left zaria to abuja i mean it was at a point where ministry at that level was something that it would be everybody's prayer point people were coming from all over the world regardless the crisis situation i mean god was glorifying himself in a way that was very humbling and in the midst of it i will finish a powerful service and it was as if my spirit it was as if i was becoming a stranger in a place that i so loved i couldn't understand for years i kept casting as it's just the devil getting angry that souls were being saved but it stayed there again it stayed there again stay in prayer for as long as that feeling remains stay in prayer for as long as that feeling remains from the day i brought this man as a business partner he's a good man he's not done anything evil but why this restraint i get up in the morning and there's this restraint i need to go to the place of prayer and when you are praying, praying, sometimes it may not be that the individual is bad. It may be that they are connected to forces that have a prophetic implication on your destiny. You may not even know. And then when God sets the people free, you see that the restraint. Let me tell you, this knowing of the spirit and this restraint is a powerful instrument of discernment. For many people, it's been the difference between life and death life and death life and death when you pray it activates discernment it helps you to escape satanic traps proverbs 14 and verse 12 I'm about to pray one more time proverbs 14 and verse 12 there is a way household of david please hear me there is a way that seemeth right unto a man it is a limitation with all men. 
there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. With all due respect and not to make you feel bad, there is a way you can sit down and calculate and say, by January, if I relocate to Canada or America, someone I met one day has promised he will give me a job. Now, you are planning, honestly. But if you don't submit that plan before the Lord, you will make many costly mistakes. It is not the plan that is wrong. It's whether or not you sieve that plan in the place of prayer. And God begins to edit it and says, this one is in your destiny, but not now. The vision is correct, but the timing is wrong. Hold on. In 2013, I started having um, just a desire in my heart, 2013, to move to Abuja. You see, it was in the prophetic blueprint, but the timing was wrong. And I remember I had a vision. I saw an aircraft. The name of the ministry was written on it. It left Zaria to Abuja. Just when it was about to get to Abuja, it crashed. I knew exactly what it meant. Today you can celebrate what God is doing. It's not just a product of correct vision. It's also correct timing. There are many people failing and they will tell you what God said. There are two things you need to receive when God speaks to you. Number one is the vision. Number two is the strategy. If you receive the vision alone, you will still fail. You need to receive the vision and the strategy. Both Joshua and Moses led the people through the Jordan. But the strategy was different. Are we together now? There was a water experience with Moses. There was a water experience with Jesus. For Moses, his strategy was to part the sea. Jesus, the strategy was to walk on water. You can have a correct vision and use an old strategy and you find out that that vision fails as if it's not God that told you. Discernment. Right for reference, we'll not read it here. Matthew chapter 2 from verse 1 down to 22. Please go and take the time and read that scripture. Many people have made a shipwreck of their destinies because they are unable to to access discernment and discernment does not have to be towards evil alone you can discern that this is the opportunity you can discern have you seen somebody and you know that there's something that i should receive from this man's destiny i don't know the person i don't know you from adam and strangely you find the person looking at you in such a way and said, have I met you before? He said, you've not met me. Oh, me too, the way I'm looking at you like that. He says, it's deep calling on to deep. Deep calling on to deep. Where do you walk? NMPC. Ah, I've been trying to see your boss. He's my elder brother. Now you see. Deep calling on to deep. Deep calling on to deep. This has happened so many times. So many times. I wonder how many opportunities that would have led to restoration that many of us have lost because you did not discern. You didn't discern seasons. You didn't discern people. You didn't discern opportunities. Seasons. People. Opportunities. Hallelujah. My charge for you as we pray is to cry that this theme restoration must happen in my life and that these are the prayer forces are we together that the ministry of angels must be activated in my life that i will use my will in the place of prayer to make quality scriptural choices and decisions is someone learning now very very powerful very important so that you don't just say restoration as a theme but that you see it work in your life and that you activate your perception of hearing spirit of the living god speak to me my family is in trouble what do i do how do i go from here do i leave lagos just because i do not have a job and just when you want to live honorably the spirit of god says hold on you are three days left to your open doors three days left three days left i believe even though the bible did not say it I believe that Joseph must have had an inclination in his heart. Walk up to this wine presser. Ask them what is wrong with them. Walk up to the baker. Ask them what is wrong with them. And he established that relationship and it later spoke concerning his life. 
these are the prayer forces ladies and gentlemen that help people to look invincible even though they are ordinary people you can command restoration by engaging the force of strategic prayer who understood me so far prayer now i want you to look at your life in one moment as we prepare to pray look at the areas in your life that require restoration because these are the areas you're going to be engaging in praying some of you all through this year from january till now the truth is that you've lost money january you lost money february you lost money by march it was looking like a breakthrough you ran into that investment and lost money again it tells you something is wrong with your discernment something is wrong something is wrong some of you the worst relationships in your life you entered them this year may not necessarily be love relationships you join wrong chariots in one month it tore your life like 10 years it's time for you to access this ability some of you you watch opportunities it came in a in a guise that you could not discern and you watch the opportunity just leave you like that and now you are regretting i was with this man for three hours and something was telling me greet him ask him if you want something you did not know that was the ceo of a company that could help you for three hours you were in the aircraft with him seated by his side and the spirit of god was telling you this is your moment just greet him sir and say i've seen you on tv but you lost courage and you didn't have discernment as soon as he dropped he said you've just lost five years in 50 minutes of carelessness who is learning i can tell you stories how my life changed how i met strategic people and kairos moments that if i lost those opportunities i would have paid a huge price paid a huge price paid a huge price i remember a man years ago he's now gone to be with the lord one time i met him immediately i saw him i sensed in my spirit that he was not going to live very long again and i had the honor of sowing into his life and to ask him to pray for me then and he spoke over my life it wasn't too long and then he went to be with the lord i said thank you jesus for this privilege i want you to really examine your life what have i lost because i didn't hear god what opportunity what grace even for those of you who are in ministry could it be what chariot did i join that has misled me and caused a lot of trouble in my life what of businessmen what of career people is it true that god is that unfaithful no you have not understood the dynamics but the good thing is that if you cannot enjoy progress you can enjoy restoration if you lost the opportunity to have made progress God spoke to you by his word. God spoke to you by his servant that this year you will experience advancement. But you are yet to see it because you did not know how to engage it. You can imagine the angel saying, engage us. We are here to serve. We are here to serve. You get up in the morning, no prayer. You get up in the night, no prayer. Prayer meetings just when you want to come. The devil uses a friend to distract you because he sees glory coming until you fail. Then he says you can now go for the prayer meeting because the goal was to stop you from entering a Kairos season. Someone begin to pray in the spirit while you are seated. Get angry within your spirit. Restoration by engaging strategic prayer, discernment, activating angels, making decrees by the Spirit. Are there people who are people of prayer here? Just a few minutes for us to pray. Some of you, before the evening service, you will already be returning with strange testimonies. You will see that the angels were always ready to walk. They excel in strength. They excel in strength. Someone pray. This issue of joblessness, I am tired of it. It is over. God, you are faithful. You are faithful. You can give me a testimony. A man of God, pray. It's time for God to open the two leaf gates of ministry. 
give you visibility, give you access. Alenda bereto savra kapalaka tabras, raka tabrenda kebereke palaka parato savresh. Hallelujah, praise God. Now, please lend me a few minutes. My apologies, I know I've stretched you a bit. Isaiah 32 and verse 15. Hmm. Isaiah 32 and verse 15. I just saw a vision. That's why I'm reading this scripture. I just saw like a farmland, desert, and then I saw something growing. That's why I said we should go to this scripture. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness a place of emptiness a place of dryness a place bankrupt of opportunity and beauty and color the Bible says it shall be a fruitful field and then the fruitful field can go to the next level where it becomes a forest for some of you you are at the wilderness level some of you have experienced a bit a fruitful field but God wants to make you a forest uh, we are going to pray along this line remember what Paul taught us that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Christ Jesus open your mouth in one minute and begin to declare over every wilderness come on a believer pray you desire genuine testimonies pray every wilderness financial wilderness ministerial wilderness household of david pray relational wilderness everything that looks like dryness in my life dryness in my destiny dryness in my career hear the word of the lord become a fruitful field and from a fruitful field a forest Ela barata kaparanta kapele katosh Sadej skeparanta kaprakata bele kaparas Sheda bele kaparakata pranta kapele katosh Take a minute to pray Take a minute to speak Take a minute to declare Please pray. In Jesus name we pray. Now please look up. I didn't have the time to read for you Matthew chapter 2. But Pastor Shola, it was a rendition of how Jesus escaped death as a baby. The Bible says when the wise men heard, they saw a star. And when they saw a star, they carried gifts and were taken to Jesus. And when Herod heard about it, the Bible said it troubled Herod. How can an old man who had years left be troubled by the birth of a baby? Because, I mean, he, he most likely was his grandfather. So before Jesus would become an adult, he would have died. He would have been secured enough. But the Bible said it troubled him greatly. There are people who don't need what you need, but they are troubled that you have it. They don't need the job, but it should not be you. They don't need the promotion, but it should not be you. They don't need the lifting, but it should not be you. They are already blessed, but you should not be included. Come on now. Is someone ready to pray? Now hear me. The Bible says when the men came and met Herod, Herod said, ah... He called on his wise men. They said, it's true. There is a prophecy like that, that a baby will be born. He now told the wise men, he said, when you find him and drop the gift, please come this route. Me too, I want to go and worship him. And the Bible says, being warned in a dream. I'm going somewhere. Being warned in a dream. He said, be careful. This man seems to look like he's a good man, but there is a motive to destroy. Being warned in a dream. After they went and did their due diligence to Jesus, watch this. The Bible tells us that when they were about to return, again a dream came, follow another route. 
because if you go to Pharaoh, both you, you will be the first to die there. Follow another route. And when Pharaoh saw, Herod saw that they had gone, to, the Bible says he was angry and he decided to kill every child. Are we together now? And whilst they were about to kill every child, the Lord told Joseph in a dream, he said, take the child to Egypt. Go and keep him there. There was a cry in Ramah. They killed all kinds of children. Just like Moses, Jesus was hid in Egypt. Until Pharaoh died. Then the angel now came in a dream again. And said, you can return back. They that want the life of the child, they are dead. But the Bible says, he was afraid and said, even the person who is sitting now, is the son of that man is also bad and he gave him another strategy you know the prayer lord every organ that can allow me receive the communication of the spirit every channel whether it's dreams whether it's visions let me be activated for my profiting that i will not lose my kairos moment if it's a dream purify my dreams show me the future someone pray if it's visions open my eyes to see oh god if it's the spirit of counsel coming through scripture guide me lead me in the way that i should go someone pray i'm tired of making mistakes tired of falling into traps that destroy there is a way that cement right onto a man someone please pray lord purify my dreams purify my visions no more dreams that mislead no more lying visions no more dreams that mislead no more lying visions purify my spiritual experiences that what i see will be consistent with what you are saying man of god pray many have acted out their dreams many have acted out visions they saw to their detriment purify my experiences purify my experiences where your dream has been hijacked by familiar spirits and they bring you scenarios through a dream scenarios through visions you obey those visions and you find out that you are against the will of god many have been misled many have been deceived many have crash landed because of what they saw because of what they heard because of what they perceive hallelujah hallelujah let me give you the final prayer point but thou O oh lord and a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord and a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head but thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, you lift my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, my We still have other serious discussions in subsequent sessions, but let me say this as a last prayer point. When God wants to bring restoration, still I'm talking about prayer. There are times it is not your prayer. Philippians 1.19 But I know that this shall turn to my salvation. I am the one in need of the salvation. But the truth is that I'm too weak to pray. It is your prayer that helps me. There are times where you may not have the level of spiritual intelligence to engage profitably in the spirit when God wants to give, show you mercy he transfers the burden of your breakthrough to a more experienced believer and leaves the person to stay there on your case it is your salvation but it is my prayer who is learning it says this shall turn to my salvation but through your prayer 
He said, brethren, pray for us. Now listen, every believer must be trained to pray. But let me submit to you by the integrity of scripture. There are certain challenges that require high level of spiritual intelligence to navigate the paths in the spirit. A combination of authority, covenant with God and the track record of his staying power. And if God depends on your spiritual growth at that point, that prayer may never be answered because you are at a loss as to what dynamics to engage. At such points, the grace of God takes your burden and takes it to a believer that has a greater stature in the spirit and drops that burden upon the person. Are we together now? This is one of the blessedness of having intercessors. No matter how anointed you are, there are times that it will take the brethren to pray for you. Because the dynamics, the kind of warfare you need to engage in sometimes. Is someone learning now? I'm saying this because I want to speak over your life. It is good for you to pray, but let me submit to you. Don't get to a point where you ignore the contribution of graces as far as commanding restoration is concerned. He said they are taken for a prayer and none say it, restore. There has to be a voice that says restore. Even if you are a professor of medicine, the day they are about to perform a surgery on you, it may even be your student who will perform that surgery. Yes, you are a professor, but hence you are on the bed. You will lie down quietly and allow another to treat you. Your knowing God personally is an advantage, but there are gifts he has put within the body as systems of his mercy. I want to speak over someone. God is in a hurry. He will not even wait for the session in the evening. He wants to change the tides over somebody's destiny. Who is ready to receive? In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. He said, and I know this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer. Let me stand by the privilege of God's mercy to pray for you. That in the name of Jesus Christ, every obstacle that has refused to move over your life. In the name of Jesus, by this grace, by this anointing. By the privilege of the election of grace, let that mountain give way now. 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 Financial mountains give way now. Relational mountains give way now. I speak to you. May the God of my covenant arise for you. Arise for you. Arise for you. Arise for you. Arise for your children. Arise for you. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I read a scripture in the Bible. It was in the book of Joshua. But the Lord ministered that scripture to me. It was a word with God and it's one of my covenants with God. It says, no man shall be able to stand against you all the days of your life. I stand upon the grace in this house and I speak to someone. Men and systems fighting prophecy over your life in the name of Jesus because you came for this restoration conference. I declare they clear out of your way. 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 They clear out of your way in the name of Jesus. He said, Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. I pray for you where you have been stagnated you have been in one position from January till now in ministry stagnated finances stagnated by the word of prophecy I speak to you go forward 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 upon Mount Zion it says upon Mount Zion listen carefully there shall be deliverance and holiness then the sons of Jacob shall possess not be aware of their possession there is a grace to be aware but there is grace to possess I pray for you everything you are already aware of that is in your prophetic destiny I release grace to possess grace to possess the job you have seen in your dream the grace to possess the properties you have seen, the grace to possess, the territories you have seen, the grace to possess, the dimensions in the spirit you have seen, the grace to possess, the grace to possess, 
in Lagos go and possess in the name of Jesus Christ. He told Joseph, you can now come out of your hiding. Those who seek the life of your child have gone. Everything that seeks your life, your health, your relevance, your influence, in the name of Jesus, let it give way now. Now, let me encourage you. Please lend me your attention. We are done already. Please let me lend my faith and my voice with the angel over this house to encourage you. I'm going to take the time tonight. I just sensed even when I was just resting yesterday preparing. I'm going to be ministering to people tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight, I really want to take the time by the Spirit of God to minister to the needs of God's people. There are people sick. There are people in bondage. We are still going to pray some more tonight. I want you to come angry in your spirit. Invite everyone you know you know someone whose life has gone haywire call them even if there's no space i believe there are, there are chairs outside everywhere and for those who will connect online truly it is a restoration service tonight come with your heart open and make up your mind that this conference will not end with you recycling prayer points again you believe that may the lord bless you and we'll see you in the evening Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.